Hey, welcome back. My name is Sushant Sutish and I am your trainer for this Azure Administrator Associate AZ104 examination course. We are going through module 2. In this lesson, we are going to learn about Azure policy. Let's have a look at the high level things what we are going to see on this video. We are going to talk about what is management group and we are going to spend quite a lot of time on Azure policy. I'm going to explain what is Azure policy, how can you implement an Azure policy, what do you want to know about Azure definitions, when you create definitions, what do you mean by initiative definition, and how do you define a scope for your definitions, and how can you create Azure policies to determine compliance as well. And throughout the journey, I will take you through the portal and show you exactly what I mean by each of these topics. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it. Let's talk about management groups. If your organization has several subscriptions, you may need a way to effectively manage access, policies, and compliance for those subscriptions. Azure management groups provide a level of scope above subscriptions. You organize subscription into containers called management groups. So let me take you through the portal to show you where you can find the management group. You can search for a management group on the global search box. Find the management group. As you can see that I already have one management group created. So you can organize subscription into containers called management group and apply your governance conditions to the management groups. So when you create management groups, you would be able to enable organizational alignment to your Azure subscription through custom hierarchies and groupings, targeting of policies and spend budgets across subscription and inheritance down these hierarchies, and compliance and cost reporting by organizations as well. So all the subscriptions within a management group automatically inherit the conditions applied to the management group. For example, you can apply policies to a management group that limits the regions available for virtual machine creation. This policy would be applied to all management groups, subscriptions and resources under the management group by only allowing VM to be created in that region. You can create a management group using the Azure portal, PowerShell, or Azure CLI. When you create a management group, it asks for a management group ID and a management group display name. The management group ID is the directory unique identifier that is used to submit commands on this management group. This identifier is not editable after creation as it is used throughout the Azure system to identify this group. The display name field is the name that is displayed within the Azure portal. A separate display name is an optional field when creating the management group and can be changed at any time. So let's learn about Azure policy. Azure policy is a service in Azure that you can use to create, assign, and manage policies. These policies enforce different rules over your resources. So those resources stay compliant with your corporate standards and service level agreements. Azure policy does this by running evaluations of your resources and scanning for those not compliant with the policies you have created. The main advantages of Azure policies are in the areas of enforcement, scaling, and remediation. So let's talk about enforcement and compliance. Turn on built-in policies or build custom ones for all resource type. Real-time policy evaluation and enforcement, periodic and on-demand compliance enforcements. So what about apply policies at scale? Apply policies to a management group which controls across your entire organization. What about remediation? 
You can use real-time remediation and remediation on existing resources as well. So Azure policy will be important to you if your team runs an environment where you need to governance things like multiple engineering teams, multiple subscription, or you may need to standardize or enforce or manage regulatory compliance and cost control as well. Before we dive deep into Azure policies, let me give you some of the use case scenarios of Azure policies. You can specify a set of virtual machines queues that your organization can deploy. Uh, another use case scenario would be you can restrict the location your organization can specify when deploying a resource, or you would be able to enforce a required tag and its value. And finally, you would be able to audit if the Azure backup service is enabled for all virtual machines or not. So let's go and find out some of the detailed information about Azure policy. Okay, let's look at how can you implement an Azure policy. To implement an Azure policy, you have to follow these four steps. The first one is browse for policy definitions. Don't worry, I will definitely take you through the Azure portal to show you how to do that. But let's understand these steps in detail before we proceed and do that. A policy definition expresses what to evaluate and what actions to take. Every policy definition has conditions under which it is enforced. And it has an accompanying effect that takes place if the conditions are met. For example, you could prevent VMs from being deployed if they are exposed to a public address. The second action is create initiative definitions. An initiative definition is a set of policy definitions to help track your compliance state for a larger goal. For example, ensuring a branch office is compliant. The third action is scope the initiative definition. You can limit the scope of the initiative definition to management groups, subscriptions, or resource groups. The fourth and the final step is view policy evaluation results. Once an initiative definition is assigned, you can evaluate the state of compliance for all of your resources. So what are policy definitions? So let me take you to the Azure portal and show you where you can find the policies first. So I'm on my Azure portal. I'm going to click on policy. If you don't see policy over here, you can search your policy on this global search box. Under policy, you can come to definitions. So there are many built-in policy definitions for you to choose from. Sorting by category will help you locate what you need. So for example, I'm going to select allowed virtual machine SKU size. This enables you to specify a set of virtual machine SKUs that your organization can deploy. Or I'm going to search for another policy now, location. So allowed location policy enables you to restrict the locations that your organization can specify when deploying resources. This can be used to enforce your geo compliance requirements. If there isn't an applicable policy, you can add a new policy definition. The easiest way to do this is to import a policy from GitHub or you create a new policy from scratch. So please note that policy definitions have a specific JSON format. As an Azure administrator, you will not need to create files in this format, but may want to review the format just so that you are familiar with it. Once you have determined which policy definitions you need, you can create an initiative definition. This definition will include one or more policies. Please note that currently an initiative definition can have up to 100 policies. The next action is scope the initiative definition. So once our initiative definition is created, you can assign the definition to establish its scope. A scope determines 
what resources or grouping of resources the policy assignment gets enforced on. So in this, you can see that the scope is the subscription. But when you create a new definition, you can decide which scope you want to assign it to. You can either select a subscription and then optionally select a resource group as well. And last but not the least is determining the compliance. Once your policy in place, you can use the compliance blade to review non-compliant initiatives, non-compliant policies and non-compliant resources. So I go back to my Azure policy widget and based on the policies you have defined, you can go and click on compliance to see how compliant you are. As you can see that I'm not compliant on this particular policy. When a condition is evaluated against your existing resources and found true, then those resources are marked as non-compliant with the policies. Although the portal does not show the evaluation logic, the compliance state results are shown. So typically the compliance state results are either compliant or non-compliant. So please note that policy evaluation happens about an hour, which means that if you make changes to your policy definition and create a policy assignment, then it will be re-evaluated over your resources within the hour. All right, so we just finished the second lesson of the second module. So we learned about management group and Azure policy. In the next lesson from the module two, we are gonna learn about role-based access control. So I will see you in the next video. Till then, take care.